On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, we talk with author and entrepreneur Tim Fargo about the power of appreciation and why you should take your new hires to happy hour. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossaman, and uh, joining me today, I'm super excited about our guest today, Tim Fargo, who was a member of the Inc. 500 twice, and he's also the author of Alphabet Success, a really cool book that I uh, read and actually reread here recently. So, Tim, thanks so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure, Kirby. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, by the way, also a great uh, person to follow on Twitter. Tim's a lot of fun. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to jump right into your book. You mentioned, I, I just loved it. I started reading it. And one of the concepts that you mentioned was the drinking horn. And uh, uh, I just love that. So tell me, tell everyone why that's important and uh, what you mean by that. Well, the idea behind the drinking horn, uh, it would, it relates to the, it's in the first chapter, which is always be committed, and it relates to commitment because I think that one place that people um, can have a little bit of a difficulty when they're trying to understand kind of an entrepreneurial journey is that you have to approach it like a drinking horn. You have to, once you pick up this, like and the idea with a drinking horn, once you pick it up, you got to finish it. Um, and and I think to have a business endeavor, you have to have that same mindset because you're going to get a. I mean, you're going to be swimming, especially in the start. You are going to swim against huge currents. Um, people that think, "Oh my God, I'm going to start my own business, going to be awesome." Look, there's a lot of great things about it, but I mean, when I started Omega, which is the company my book talks about a fair bit, um, it took me almost a month to get my first sale. So. You know, so every day you know, there's a little question in the back of your mind, you know, did I do something really dumb? You know, am I like completely on the wrong track? And, you know, it goes back to the drinking horn thing. You can't relent. You can't give up. You, I mean, you, you may change your approach um, and how you're going to try to get there, but you've got to absolutely keep going. So I think, you know, for me, the drinking horn was, you know, the me a metaphor for just, you know, hanging on and, and seeing it through because, you're going to encounter resistance, you know, for all the glory stories and everything else. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of headwinds that you encounter against, especially when you're getting going. And I think that, you know, knowing that up front and having that idea, I'm going to be committed to this idea and I'm really going to go for it is really, really important. So that was the, uh, that was the nature of that example. Yeah, absolutely. I, one of my favorite, I saw Will Smith of all people and he uh, it was in an interview and he said, I never have a plan B because all it does is detract from plan A. And, and I kind of felt like when I read that, it just, it was, there was a similar concept there. Right. I think you probably have heard this story. Um, it's kind of an old chestnut about, you know, the guy, the, the captain who goes ashore on an island with his troops and then he has them burn the boats um, so that there's no possibility of retreat. It's sort of, you know, we're either going to take this island or we're done. So, and, you know, and I mean, it sounds extreme, but I think, you know, when you're doing something, you have to have a little bit of that mindset because if you have an alternative, um, you'll, you know, you can very often want to reach for it. Actually, it's interesting um, with regard to, say, for instance, like exercise, it was one of the reasons when I was doing more running, which I need to get back to, but um, I would do like what's called an out and back so mm -hmm. that you're running away from your house right. or wherever you're staying. Which basically means if you can make it to the turnaround, let's say you're going to run six miles. So if you make it three, you know for sure you're going to do the next three because you're that far away from home. So yeah, you got to um, get there. Same. So you might as well do it quickly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Well, the other thing that kind of resonated for me, not only from your book, but again, I follow you on Twitter. You talk a lot about appreciation um, and why that's been important for your success. Um, why do you think that's important? Whew, that's a big topic, right. um, and it's a and it's a big hot button for me. Um, and I I've written about it, and I and I thank people on Twitter because it is a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, my own impression, and you know, perhaps I just am different from other people, but it's really seemed to work out for me. And that is when when someone does something for you. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort to just 
say thank you or show your appreciation in some way. And and I I used an example in a blog post about um, I bought a vehicle and it wasn't cheap. It was actually kind of expensive. And there was no, I mean, the guy if the guy said thanks, he didn't even do it. It was kind of like, hey man, thanks. You know, was so like on the by and by when to me, if you want to build a business or even just kind of like be a leader to, that people want to engage with, I think you need to show appreciation because, frankly, I mean, you know, yeah, you can go with this idea that you're going to compensate people with gigantic amounts of money or whatever, but a lot of people, I mean, myself included, you know, people want to be appreciated. Say, oh, thanks. You know, hey, Kirby, that was great. You know, I really appreciate it. Like me appreciating being on your show. Um, and I think when people demonstrate that, especially in a way where you slow down and you take a second to make sure that they really understand, like, hey, that was awesome, man. I really, really appreciate that. That's a big, big thing. And it doesn't, it's, it's so fundamental, but it's so often forgotten that it just, for me, anyhow, it's a little bit astonishing because it's just kind of common courtesy. Yeah. And, um, you know, some people say, well, of course I appreciate it. It's like, well, then is it a real stretch to, to articulate it? Um, so like I say, it may seem very basic to some people, but I think saying it and, and I indicate this in the, in the book, but um, one of the things we used to do, we never even, we wouldn't let you meter the mail, like to send a thank you card. It had to be handwritten. Um, no email, no email thank yous because they're so ubiquitous, I mean, you know, oh wow, I sent him an email thank you. It's like, yeah, well, that's how personal, <laughs> um, you know, and, and just, and then, and I, and I actually would even, I would try to get to know people well enough to know, like if somebody was really fond of dogs, I'd try to find a, like a thank you card that had a dog on it. Mm -hmm. Um, just because, you know, it's a little bit like you're paying attention, mm -hmm. um, to people. And I think in a world where everything kind of gets funneled into, you know, electronic communication, taking the time to actually do something that's like slow down and, and really, and really let that person know you care. Um, for me, it's been a huge thing. I think it's been in, very instrumental in, in being me being successful in everything I've done. So people can do what they want, but I think that's a, that's a big one. Yeah, I think it's a, it's another way to stand out because you mentioned it's it's so few people do it that when you do really appreciate it, it it shows shows a difference. So I I totally agree. That's one of the reasons I think it resonated with me. Um, the other uh, probably the third you know third question and kind of one of the other things that stood out is that everybody has different thoughts on hiring and when, if you've built two businesses that were in the Inc. 500, you had to do a lot of hiring. Um, and you said that you insisted on having happy hour with each hiring prospect. Tell me why. Okay, this is actually it's interesting. Um, HR people didn't really like this a whole a lot. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the reality is, okay, you're going to hire a salesperson. And for, for us in particular, this was part and parcel of the job. I mean, you were going to be meeting clients. You were going to be going out for cocktails and doing things like that. So, you know, you try to put people um, in as close to the environment they're going to be in um, as when they're actually doing the job. Um, we did it with investigators as well. They had to do a ride-along where they'd go with an investigator. But on the happy hour, I mean, we had some just astonishing results. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. because, And I think sometimes people thought, that getting invited to the happy hour was kind of like, woohoo, I'm celebrating because I got the job. <laughs> yeah? yeah? So, and that was awesome because uh, you really got to see some insightful things there. Um, yeah. But, I mean, one time we had a happy hour and one of the candidates was sitting with me at a table. You know, we've got our drinks in front of us. And there's a hockey match on, but it's behind us. This guy turns his chair around and starts watching the hockey. Now, he's still talking to me a little bit, but I thought... This is the first time you've met me, man. <laughs> um, but my main, the main point, I mean, I could, and I could tell you a million I funny bet. stories, um, including people, of course, kind of over-serving themselves, because we didn't try to say, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't have that, because I'm not going to be there babysitting them when they're with a client. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have the, you know, the right kind of breaks when it comes to that, 
you know, it could be a problem. And as, as crazy, like I say, as crazy as it sounds, I mean, we had huge success. And as you might imagine, the guy who turned around and watched hockey didn't get hired. Um, <laughs> but, and, I, and people might think, well, that just sounds like, you know, that's really crazy. But I mean, to get invited to the happy hour, I mean, the guy had already gone through, you know, probably three or four interviews to even get there. Right. Um, but, you know, the, I mean, we, I think when you hire someone, um, and I could really belabor this point because I think when you need help and, you know, maybe someone has experience or they've got a friend that works in the company, it's really tempting to say, oh, okay, well, let's just bring that person in. But hiring someone is incredibly easy. I mean, in terms of functional, you know, functionally hiring, it's like, hey, you want a job? Okay, great, you're hired. <laughs> um, and... So the actual act of hiring someone is really, really simple. And conversely, um, as most people who have a business know, firing someone is an extremely unpleasant task, you know, yeah. because you're basically pulling, you know, the rug out from underneath someone's livelihood. Mm -hmm. And to me, if you're an employer, if you get into, you know, you're in business and you decide to hire someone, you're making a commitment. And part of that commitment is, I know what I'm doing well enough to make a promise to you that I'm going to let you, you know, come to work here. Be and taking the time on the front end to hire the right people, even, I mean, it can seem excruciating, but I can promise anyone, especially people that haven't fired many people, it's so much nicer to go through, like, the, a process where it's harder to get in because getting rid of people is a drag. And it's a and it's not only a drag for the person that you get rid of, it's also, I mean, depending on the environment within your office or, you know, whatever business you're in, it's also very disruptive to the other staff because sometimes they read things into it like, oh, is there financial trouble or something in the business? So making it difficult to get in to me was always really important because I wanted, once they were in, then I wanted to spend my time really working with them to be great, like, um, and if we had the right process on the front end, usually we had a really good result afterward. Um, and that happy hour was really one piece of many. But I mean, with the sales staff, I mean, it was it was really really important to get that insight. And um, like I say, it did end up yielding quite a lot of funny stories. So. Yeah, but if nothing else, right? That's good. Yeah. Well, well, cool, Tim. I appreciate you taking the time. I give everybody one chance to ask me a question, so I wanted to turn that over to you. All right. Well, you know, I was thinking about it because um, you'd mentioned it, and I'd seen the show. So, um, if I was a business genie um, and I was to be able to grant you a wish, um, and the wish can't be for more wishes, um, cause people <laughs> say that quite often. Um, you know, what what would you what what would be the one thing that you, as a um, <clears throat> excuse me, as a business person, would want? Boy, that's a that's a super question, um, and. Uh, I think I'm going to go to an answer that you think is probably a stock answer, but I, it, there's a reason. Um, more cash, <laughs> uh, more profit, simply because you know I think that provides stability uh, within the organization. It b would provide us um, an opportunity to grow. And quite frankly, one of the things that we value here at Hossman Marketing is we really try to give back. And so by having uh, additional resources – uh, within the within the walls of this place, I think we'd have an opportunity to give back more and more generously. So um, it, it, it's not you know who doesn't want more cash. I don't know that that's a crazy original answer, but I think that's that's probably what I'd ask for. Well, hey, having been you know having a you know medium sized business like you do, um, I'm well acquainted with uh, you know like just just I mean cash is such a necessary thing both for I mean, it, it, you know, for some people, it might be like, yeah, everybody wants cash. Mm -hmm. But in a business, you can make a sale and have somebody owe you money, right. and that's and that's awesome. Um, but then you actually got to collect it <laughs> that's right. uh, because <clears throat> people people want to get paid if they're working for you. It's really funny how that works. Um, <laughs> and, and having and having cash to do that is really, really important. And um, going back to my business, I mean, I remember we had factoring, which is a really expensive form of financing. Um, you know, just to try to get cash, and um, and we never would have done that. I mean, that decision was born of necessity that we didn't have enough cash. 
you know, and I might, you know, kind of going along with your answer, we, when we got more money, we were able to make more, like, truly optimized decisions. We weren't just going, well, that, I can afford this little rickety chair now, right. you know, and hopefully it won't break before I can afford the actual chair that I want. Totally. Uh, so I completely understand. I think it's it's it might seem like a standard answer, but it, it's a standard answer for a reason because this cash is cash is really important. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Tim, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really sincerely appreciate it. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you told me to in question two. I really do. Um, and uh, I'll be anxious. We'll have to we'll have to do this again sometimes. All right. No, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. And I really appreciate you having me on. It was uh, it was a pleasure. I I enjoyed watching your show and I'm I'm very happy to be uh, to be part of it. All right, cool. Well that wraps up another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching, but wait, can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it's right over here. And hey, if you want to watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe. <laughs>